everyone. My name is Claire Patton and welcome to this episode of Discovering Digital Humanities with the Edmund Lowe Library. Today I'm talking to Dr. Steph Link about her Wrangler project. Hi, Dr. Link. Hello, Claire. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so happy to have you. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your Wrangler project? Sure. So I decided to talk today a little bit about the concept of linguistics and applied linguistics that helped to motivate the Wrangler project before I actually get into the Wrangler projects. I feel like in digital humanities, there's so many diverse fields that are doing such great things with technology. And I wanted to show a glimpse of what we do in linguistics. What I've put here is my title, Using and Developing Textual Analysis Tools for Digital Humanities Research. So I am an applied linguist. I am in the English department and I specialize in developing and evaluating tools or technology for second language writing and scientific writing. So looking at like automatic feedback tools, um, automatic classification tools like classifying text and textual analysis tools. So when we look at textual analysis tools, there are many in the field. One of them are uh, like these word cloud formations. So they represent highly frequent words that are found in a text. So in this case, I put in the text, the entire written text of um, a textbook that I'm using for my language and technology class to find the most frequent words. Uh, there's also other tools where you can explore a large what we call corpus or collection of texts that are found in many different um, platforms. For example, this one, the Corpus of Contemporary American English has texts from from thousands of locations on the web, academic texts, magazines, blogs, and you can search for search terms like I search for digital humanities and you can find out uh, who's talking about digital humanities, where they're talking about it, when they're talking about it. You can look at the linguistic structure of how they're talking about it, right? So this is a textual analysis tool. But you can also put in a text into some of our tools and you can try to figure out what is that text about. So here I put in a text into a technology called AntConc, and you can see the most frequent, what we call engrams. Engrams are these clusters of highly frequent language features. And if you look and analyze this, you can probably tell that this text is Harry Potter. Well, we can take this knowledge then, all of this knowledge, the, the clouds, the concordance lines that I showed you on this slide and these n-grams, all of this knowledge to train a computer to also understand language, to communicate with the computer so that the computer can do a complex, solve complex language problems. So for example, we can train a computer to understand the language of all these different genres, cover letters, resumes, grant proposals, all of these genres that people every day have to write, but oftentimes struggle to write. So by using these tools, we can make this process easier, but the problem with these tools, a long lasting problem that we've had in our field is to use these tools, first and foremost, you need to know what you are looking for. And if you're not a linguist, so for a linguist or for other people who have like a research question, we know what we're looking for before we go into these tools. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you open up one of these tools and you're like, okay, what do I do? So in my work, I really think about this question of who do I want to serve and what are they looking for? So if I can figure out what they are looking for, who they are and what they are looking for, then I can better help them, right? <laughs> and then these tools also do require a linguistic or DH training in order to use them effectively, which is not ideal because not everybody has the time to um, get this training or has the resources to find these training sessions. And so I figure, well, how can we provide these tools, but then 
provide tools that have a lower learning curve. So you could just go into these tools and begin using or conducting textual analysis to benefit yourself. Also, these tools are largely for analyzing language. So as linguists or applied linguists, we are always looking at different sources of language to figure out what is the what is the text telling us? How is the text changing? How is language varying across different settings or contexts? But a question that I have is how can non-linguists actually analyze language and learn to do something with this? And that's really a very interesting part because I feel like these tools are so powerful and they have a lot to teach us about the world and about language and how language is used. And so why can't we spread this to other fields? And then finally, these tours, tools do cater to researchers like linguists or like computational linguists who uh, develop technologies using this knowledge. But I'm interested in knowing how these tools can be more user centric or developing with the user in mind rather than or in addition to the researcher. Because a lot of the tools that I showed you before, they're very much like a researcher is going in here to use this tool. Now, how can we do that so that a, a learner or a user can go into this tool and use it for their benefit, right? <laughs> so that brings me then to the Wrangler Project. So a very long introduction to how we're getting here. This is a, a technology that my team specifically myself and uh, Robert Redman, who's in the, the linguistics program, we've been developing this tool for several years now. And what's unique about this tool is that it combines many different textual analysis techniques to solve not only problems in DH, but interdisciplinary problems across our entire university from humanities to social sciences to uh, STEM fields, for example. And the main premise of Wrangler for rounding up research writing resources is to teach novice research writers the structure and language of peer-reviewed journal articles. So right now we're focusing on peer-reviewed journal articles, but as you saw in my previous slide, there are many, many genres that we can be teaching um, or analyzing the language of in order to be able to teach those genres. Wrangler just right now is looking at journal articles. So by analyzing journal articles, learners or users, whoever they may be, can begin to understand what is the structure of research in their field. So if they are biologists, they can learn from humanities-based research how to understand their field, right? Or if they are in business or in engineering. So it's really neat. Uh, but anyway, they're, we're training them to analyze this language of published research in their field. So they're learning from successful writers in their field, successful being that they've been published before, learning from them by using language analysis. So I'm sort of creating like mini linguists all across our campus and then having them incorporate that knowledge into actual writing of their drafts. So to make this um, a little bit more feasible, remember that learning curve, to lower the learning curve, we've incorporated what we call genre-based automated writing evaluation, where they can get automatic feedback on what they're doing. <laughs> so this is a lot, I know. So let's put this in more like concrete terms. I'm gonna show you some images of what Wrangler looks like. Here's the homepage. Um, students across our campus can get access to this now. I'm actually gonna be hosting some workshops throughout each semester so that you can attend one of those workshops and get access to Wrangler. But once you get access, you have the ability to go into four different modules, learn, analyze, explore, and write, learn. So one of the problems that I highlighted before is not only the learning curve, but they need to learn about language analysis and how it's going to benefit their needs. So by the having the learn module, we teach them that and they use that knowledge to then analyze, explore language and then write. So 
The learn module looks something like this. It contains 80 short videos, like three minutes long. They'll watch them here. They can take notes and these notes will follow them as they're working through the tool. They can look at introductions, methods, results, or discussion sections. And then ultimately they apply that knowledge to actually analyzing research in their field. So this is from one of my students this summer who uploaded an article from her field and color coded it based off of a framework that they learn about in the learn module. So this color coding shows them the argument structure and then they get automatic feedback both positive and constructive about their, their manual annotation. So here they're able to learn through the visualization, the color coded visualization of the argument. Um, they'll analyze all the sections of the article. They then, let's say they have a, a language feature that sticks out to them. They want to learn more about that. They can then explore that in our explore module. So here I just put in the word importance, but they can put in other words and get um, a concordance very much like one of the previous technologies that I showed you. Right. They can see that word uses in context. They can explore words before and words after. And ultimately, if they find a pattern that really sticks out to them, that will help them communicate their argument, they can save it in our lasso tool. Let me move this. So the lasso tool, they can save like let's say in, in the learn module, they learn about the importance of claiming that your topic is central to the field. So claiming centrality, and they can add these different features. We call them language templates. So many studies have, um, this topic has consistently identified as, right? So this student did this, they got positive feedback, and then the teacher was able to go in and provide additional feedback. So it's both automated and teacher-based feedback, but ultimately it's for a great purpose because they are bringing all of this knowledge, the, the learning of the framework, the visualization of the structure, the saving of these language templates that can help them communicate across disciplines and then incorporating that into the right module. So here's just a glimpse of a right module. They're just typing into a sort of basic text editor. Here I'm showing teacher feedback, but the next step in our development process is automatically coding the colors for students so that they can see what they are doing in comparison to published research in their field. So with that said, um, like I mentioned, you know, uh, there is a way of getting access to this. I don't know. Um, all the details of this or how long this lecture is going to be available every semester. This is going to be an option. You can always look on the Graduate College's Monday memo for opportunities to learn about this project or through the VPR. The Research at a Glance will sometimes have some workshops promoted, promoted through there. Absolutely. That sounds like just the coolest project ever. Um, I'm going to end sharing your screen now. One second. So yeah. how did you come up with this idea for the Wrangler project? Yeah, so in my uh, doctorate studies, I was studying at Iowa State University and my mentor there, we were, I was on a project where we were doing something very similar, trying to figure out the, the writing conventions of research articles. And there's lots and lots of gaps in the field because this is a very new area. So previous to Wrangler and that technology, the textual analysis tools, automatic writing evaluation tools were strictly for sentence level concerns like grammar, mechanics, style, which students, especially like native speakers don't need as much, but non-native speakers, they need them a lot, but not until like later time, later in their writing process. So we need something that helps them earlier in their writing process, right? right? When they're first constructing their thoughts, trying to conceptualize their work. And so with that and all the gaps that are currently in the field and the limited research that's out there, I decided that this is something that I need to pursue. Because as soon as I came to Oklahoma State, I realized how few resources there are for helping research writers. Now we have a fantastic writing center. They do a lot of great work. Um, 
but it's always good to have ways of complementing what we currently have and building. Uh, the more resources, the better. The more good resources, the better. Yeah. So how did you go about des- designing this technology? Well, so my PhD is in applied linguistics and technology. And I learned in my PhD, um, well, I had dabbled in coding before my PhD. I've actually always had a, been really in tune with technology. I love technology. I've always learned, tried to learn a lot about technology. But it wasn't until my PhD where I sat down and um, made sure I knew how to apply my coding skills and expand on my coding skills. So to this day, I don't consider myself a computational linguist. A computational linguist would be fluent in computational languages like um, PHP, Python, C++. But I do have this computational knowledge. So I am able to sit down with the computer scientists and know how they communicate with computers, how they understand computers in order to be able to communicate effectively with that person to collaborate. Yeah. So that's the start of it. You know, just having a broad understanding of how computers work and how you commun- can communicate with them, uh, even the basics. My PhD, though, I ended up developing a tool for analyzing uh, writing. I looked at non-native speakers writing across program levels. So like a first year program, a second year program, and a third year program, and tried to figure out if I could predict the quality of text um, based off of the program levels. And so I had experience developing this tool, especially at the background, the back end integration of a tool like this. So coming to Oklahoma State, I thought I was going to continue that. And I I still have intentions of doing that, but I realized that something bigger was this need for research writing. And that's why I shifted back to another area that I knew about, which is this genre analysis. And so um, computation is, even though we don't think of it as um, a skill set that digital humanists have to have. Um, It's a skill set that we do value a lot in linguistics. And since then, I've also been trying to expand the knowledge of our students into coding. So for example, in my language and technology class, I have 10 undergraduates and I'm teaching them Python. And we're getting to a point where, well, we're, we just started, but we're going to get to a point where they're gonna be able to use their Python skills to analyze text, um, to create their own corpus, to work from a textual analysis standpoint. So it all starts from somewhere. I know that my answer is <laughs> very long, but it all comes from a desire to, or a de- yeah, a desire to understand computers and the willingness to learn from others along the process. I think my immediate goal is sharing Wrangler throughout our campus. And I also have some strategic partners on other campuses that we are ready to release Wrangler on their campuses very soon. So that's, that's the immediate goal. I'm also looking for other grant projects to expand the Wrangler camp capabilities. I think that there's so much that could be done here. A lot of materials to develop, like we're working on an open textbook that will be obviously openly available to students who use Wrangler. And so we're really excited about that part of the project as well. Yeah, that's so cool. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. Awesome, Claire. Thank you so much. Yeah.